rolling. <laughs> we are rolling. Hello everybody. Welcome. I'm just about to do a little throwing, but before that, we'll give you a, a background to uh, the studio. Just had a workshop uh, this last weekend and um, uh, what have I got going on here? I've got some some um, mugs that I'm just about to be putting handles on shortly, but that's not what I won't be doing that in this video. And this is a bowl I was working on, which is a uh, a shellacked bowl uh, on the on the inside. Um, you can see that I've been rubbing it after I shellacked, put the shellac pattern on. You can see the the shellac is beginning to stand up, stand out, as it were. For those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, shellac. Okay. Paint your pattern on your dry pot with shellac. When the shellac is dry, you then take a sponge and you wipe over, okay, to allow the, uh, to wash away the clay where the shellac isn't, which effect, in effect lets where the shellac is stand up proud. So that can actually be quite a, quite a nice uh, effect with glaze okay those two guys you saw you saw me working on uh, I got a, a, a paddled pot here I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and lift that with one hand we'll turn the camera upside down so you can see the form <laughs> it's a novel idea isn't it Okay, so anyway, back to the wheel. That's just a little quick background. A background tour. And I'm here on my leech treadle wheel. And what I want to do is just do... I wanted to make something. It's a repeat item. Yeah, we had a good workshop uh, this last weekend. Um, who do we have? Uh, give them a shout out. Uh, Angel, um, Peter, Angel, Peter, Dan and Joan. So yeah, they came here for some practicing and we had a good time. And they, they're gonna go home and, and do some practicing. Okay, so This is 14 ounces of clay. What I want to make is a, uh, a kind of gravy pourer with a thrown side handle. Sounds pretty highfalutin, doesn't it? A gravy boat. Yeah. I guess that's what you call it, a gravy boat. Slow boat to China. So, it's basically thrown in the form of a GP bowl. We're not quite as, not quite as wide as a GP bowl is thrown. You know what, I haven't thrown any GP bowls for a long time. Yeah, they don't seem to... I don't know what it is, why... Uh, I don't... Doesn't seem to be a demand for GP bowls. It's strange, you know, in England um, people crazy about GP bowls you probably can't make enough of them whereas over here in the US it's not the case so it seems anyway 
If anybody wants GP bowls, just write to me. I'll knock them off a dozen. <laughs> so that at the moment is six, just about six inches in width. Right. So, uh, where's my throwing stick? Here it is. So we're going to just go down to the foot there. With the GP bowl, you really wet trim the clay away. Okay, because these don't get trimmed. Sorry, all you. All you you trimaholics. I'm convinced that some people just take up pottery just so they can get a trim tool in their hands and um, and uh, just watch that clay come spiraling off. It's just it's addictive, isn't it? <laughs> to me. I mean it is in a way, I know what you mean. I understand. I understand. I am compassionate. Well that's actually... Wait a minute, I just want to make it a fraction wider. Yeah. Maybe that's done it. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Yeah. So, leather. Like that. Maybe I should just uh, set a gauge. Hang on, I should get a bit of clay. Learn to work to a gauge if you don't already. It is the number one method of throwing. Well, at least I'm convinced it is. Maybe you're not, but I am. That uh, will really take your throwing on to new level if you start working to a gauge, I promise you. At first, you might not think so, but just stick with it and you will soon see. All right, so that's a, that's a simple, Pretty simple form, isn't it? Um, Narrow-footed. We we see we see the gauge is set there, just about the sixteenth of an inch away. So that's going to give us our height, as well as our, our our width, all in one very simple uh, simple piece of wood just sticking out there. So what I want to do now is put a pouring lip on this. So we just bring that in a touch. I'm going to put a pouring lip. Actually, what I'll do first of all before I do that, because if I put a, a pouring lip on that and now uh, then cut it off afterwards, because I always cut it off with the wheel going, the pouring lip is going to smack into the gauge, isn't it? So we'll, we will. I'll just cut him off first. That. And now we're going to do a pouring lip. How do we do a pouring lip? Okay, take your left hand and dry your fingers and, and put them in, in, in this position. Okay, so then we're going to put that hand just like that, just up to the, up to the, the place where we want to put the pouring lip. All right, which is going to be there. With your index finger of your other hand, okay. We're going to put it inside 
and we're gonna wiggle it like this, you see? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Left, right, left, right, left, right. And as we do it, we're gonna pull this hand this way as we do it, okay? All right, so in here, let's start this left, right, wiggle, wiggle, you see? And now pulling it very slightly this way, is where the gravy is going to gush out all right so now I've stopped doing it now these two fingers here what they have done is they've kept back the rest of the form of the pot so all we've done we've stretched the clay between these two fingers here all right and should be it. Now, I don't usually do this uh, so soon after making it. I usually leave it, say, 10 or 15 minutes just to set up. But I've done it, I've done it for your benefit just to show you uh, how we do it. Let's take the camera off and have a, a quick look. So, so what you want to do is try to keep the integrity of the of the roundness of the form, okay? And then only only it changes here where the where the pouring lip is, okay? So that's why we put those two fingers there on either side when we do that. All right, so now I need to, to lift him off. So we're gonna do that now. Camera back on the tripod. And it's a good idea before you lift a pot off the wheel, think where am I gonna put it? Because quite a lot of times I see people, they lift their pot off the wheel and they realize they don't go, haven't got a spare space they haven't got a spare space on their wear board because it's all chock-a-block with other things. Uh, and you know, then they, then they have a problem. So let's just, so the, the way to get these off is like this, okay? You get right to the foot of the pot, okay, with dry fingers and just, it'll just come straight off, you see? Easy peasy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. Is that, let's do one more quickly, as we've got that gauge uh, set up. Dee, 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 dee. So. Yeah, give me your feedback on camera positions. You know, when I'm doing these videos. Um, I don't know if the lighting is as good as I want it. Hang on, I've got an extra light. Let me see if I can bring it. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I'll put that in there. Will that be in the way? Uh -huh. Hang on a minute, let me just... Right, oops of experimentation going on here folks you just have to bear with me i'll tell you what let me just zoom it in and you won't, then you won't have to see that well let's try that anyway see how we go uh, put my tea over there all right so good idea cone up always your clay first center down that now, now break in here not too fast with your wheel speed now pulling up like that I'm literally just pulling up the clay against the side of my hand here my hand is on the outside you see and pulling and then 
lifting like that. I find that works for me anyway. Now pulling it out fairly straight at this stage. Keep it watered. Nothing worse than dry clay, a piece of dry clay on your hand to pull a pot off center. It'll, ha it'll do it very easily. Okay, so now I've got it like that. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the rim. Like that. Yep. Water. Now, now giving it some belly and form and, and bringing it, bring it up to the gauge. Okay. It's, it's, it, it, you know what, you know what a gauge is? It's like a GPS in a car. A what, Simon? A GPS? How can that be? Well, you know, you know when the GPS's first came out, I remember people said to me, ah, I don't need one of those. I don't need a GPS. That's for, you know, it's for sissies. But you know what, ever since I, I've used a GPS, it's taken a lot of the stress out of driving. I don't know if it does for you, but it, because it, it, it's, do, it's done the map work, map, map work and the map reading for you, hasn't it? It's got your destination in mind. And A gauge has got your destination in mind as well. This is your destination. All you've got to do is follow the instructions of the gauge or your GPS. And if you follow the instructions, you will find that you end up at the gauge. What are the instructions? The instructions are up a bit, up a bit, a little further, come on. Come on, you see, and um, there it is. We've arrived at our destination thanks to the gauge. You see, it it means I it, I don't have to do all this wretched map reading. You know, I have to keep finding a parking place, the place to stop, so I can I can pull over and read the map. I don't have to do it. You see, I just have to look at the gauge, and the gauge tells me. Gauge says. Up a bit, come on, up a bit. Sorry, that's my little, my little kind of simplified. <laughs> but it's true, it's true. The gauge will take the stress out of making a pot because it, it tells you what you've got to do and where you've got to aim for, okay? Maybe that will help somebody. Okay, so again, like this, it helps just dry dry your fingers here where they're going to touch the pot, but wet this other finger, all right? Like that. Put the finger in. Let me see if I can lift this up so you can see a bit better. And put it around there a bit. You see? See that left and right movement like that? Okay. So what we're doing here is we're stretching out the clay at that point between my two fingers, you see, we're stretching it. Okay. You do need to come back actually, once you've done a poured lip like this, because you know what, the, the clay has a memory, doesn't it? And it wants to return to being round. So your nice little pulled out pouring lip here, when you've done it, you come back and you look at it an hour or two down the road and you'll see that it's lost some of its definition. It's, it's, it's sort of, and you need to then redo it one more time, very quickly, redo it, and you'll find that it will, um, then it will hold, if you understand me. All right, there it is. Ah, I should have, do you know what I did wrong? Is anybody paying attention? 
Is anybody paying attention? I did something wrong, didn't I? Because I should have cut it off before I did the, the pouring lip. So I'm going to have to now cut it off with one revolution all the way around and it's got to stop there otherwise it's going to smack the gauge. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, thank you YouTube. Okay, ready, ready, steady, ready, steady. Stop. Stop the world. I want to get off. Okay, that. Okay, like that. Lift. Woo. Put him down there next to his brother. Next to his brother. Yeah. So, um, just to show you that. See this light will. Just wanting to tweak it a touch. As I said to you, these. You don't really want to do it when it's as wet as it is, because these, these are freshly thrown. Always a good idea when you're going to do your pouring lips. What I'll do is I'll throw a whole board of these, and then I'll come back, you see, afterwards, maybe 10 minutes later, and do the pouring lips, rather than doing them as I'm doing them right now. But that's just to show you. All right. So the next, the next, let's turn this off. The next thing to do uh, with, these, with, the, with, with these guys is I'm going to put a handle. I'll show you the kind of handle I mean and what I'm talking about. It's one of these, it's one of these kind of handles. It's a thrown hollow handle and it's gonna go on the side. Okay, but it's not. Go it's going to go on the side. On this side, it'll go um, sort of at r at right angles. You see, to uh, to the uh, spout, the pouring lip, I should say. All right. Okay, folks. Well, I hope that's been inspirational for you. And um, yeah, please go to my go to my website. SimonLeachPottery.com, and uh, I've got one more workshop this weekend. I've got two spaces. If you want to come, uh, just call me up on the phone or email me immediately and say, yeah, I want to come and fill those two spaces. That would be good if you could do that. And um, if you'd like to do that, I mean, you know. And uh, so, yeah, other than that, yeah, I've got to get some, I've decided these little uh, leathers, the leathers with the, with the float, I'm going to put a load of those up there, see if, if that interests people. Other than that, same, same as usual. Yeah, I need to get more pots up there. That's one thing I'm not very good at, is getting the pots up there. I get full behind with it onto my Etsy shop. You see, being a potter, it means you have to do, you have to do a lot of, lot of different jobs. Invariably, sometimes, you know, glaze making falls behind or some aspect of being a full-time potter, you know, oh, that sign needs repainting down the road, you know, and I keep meaning to do it, but I never managed to get it done, you know. Uh, oh, I've got to get more pots up on Etsy. Oh, it means I've got to go photograph them and, you know, all this business. But there you go. That's all. That's all part of being a potter. At least you get some, you know, you don't have a monotonous job. Like some people, I wouldn't change what I do for a for most what most people do, I tell you, I think it's a good way to um, good day, good way to pass your time. I think. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you in the next video. Keep practicing, as always. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.